topic was privatization of public schools, and this is what we came up with with some ideas to move forward. They're not in any particular order, okay, so I'm just going to read them off. One was to uh, confront Hoopenthal about the money that came to our state from Race to the Top, to kind of know what's going on about that, fact check it, what's, where, where is the money going? Good, good. Go Two, start. connect with uh, other movements that are dealing with the same thing. Three, uh, take the fight to the source. Four, pass literature around. One of our members that came to our group happened to find our flyer on the ground. <laughs> awesome. Not for literary, but, you know. <laughs> and then, of course, as all of you, we, we took people's email addresses, so now we can get information out to them and they can get out to more people and so forth. So continue that. Do this Occupy Education again because we had such little time. Now we've got it under, now we know what we're doing and now we can get it out to the media and get more people here. Um, seven, I'm sorry, six was rally on Monday. Give them information on education to pass out of their rally. Seven, notify uh, progressive Dems and teachers unions. Eight, information banks fact check legislator statements where we can actually say if somebody says something that's inaccurate. Nine, check NEA and federal teachers unions for what they're doing for the cause. And ten, news stations, Democracy Now! apparently has an hour newscast that we can pass our information and pass on our e-zine to them so they have the information of what we're, what we're supporting. And then, um, and I think the, the last one, I. My personal thing is that it's the biggest one, and that's the reverse the narrative that our schools are so broken. And start funding it. Right on. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. I was afraid you weren't going to bring that one up. Okay. Um, we are from the group uh, What's Money Got to Do With It? Uh, how Income Affects Educational Opportunities. Um, and so we talked a lot about. Uh, money and income in education, but a good percentage of the uh, workshop and the talk and the conversation had to do with information about uh, other ways or other structures for education. And um, I'm hoping that uh, along with notes on the Facebook page that um, some of this information will be on OccupyPHX.org as well, but um, a lot of it had to do with how other countries approach education, not as competition, but as cooperation and how cooperation um, is really important uh, between groups that can help uh, education uh, and not just have it be um, schools and teachers and students in competition. Um, and so uh, we specifically were talking about um, how a lot of this especially helps schools um, who need uh, programs, especially schools with high levels of poverty, and how uh, that uh, severely influences how a school performs. And so we had two questions, first of all, that uh, we wanted sort of to continue to brainstorm. Um, how can we get better programs for schools with high poverty levels? Clearly these programs help, but how can we fund them? How can we get people to continue to support them? Um, how can we get more information on programs that have succeeded in the past? And then um, some ideas for action. Um, we also were talking about reversing the narrative um, that it's not the schools that are, are broken. It's uh, in a lot of ways uh, the approach, this co competitive approach and um, every time we try to fix it, um, it potentially gets worse. Um, one uh, action was uh, contributing tax money directly to the schools or directly to programs that help the schools um, instead of contributing it to kind of this overall vast fund, having the opportunity and, and uh, trying to get an uh, opportunity to do that. Um, and really, one of the biggest ones is communicating, get education out there, especially to parents. Helping parents understand the benefits of their involvement, because parents are the ones that can help influence uh, school boards and um, districts in a way that um, otherwise, sometimes the buck just stops there. And especially letting parents know about programs that already do exist that can help um, make their schools better um, programs like uh, uh, opportunities for students with disabilities and, and uh, that we also discussed as well. So those are the, what we had. Thanks. Hi, I'm Chelsea. I was leading the um, higher education uh, secrets for the 99%. And we had veteran educators with us. They had to leave. <laughs> but these were people who have been involved in education and activism 
you know, for 25, 30 years, and then we had students with us. Um, we had a great conversation, and what I'm going to do, um, I actually feel kind of honored, because I've been following Occupy since the beginning, and one of the groups that I really followed on Twitter was Occupy Boston, and a Phoenix resident who goes to school in Boston who is heavily involved in Occupy Boston is going to read our action items. Woo! So I will introduce to you Tari. So we talked about a lot of problems with higher ed, and we came up with quite a few solutions. So number one was increased gift aid and reduced tuition for low-income students, increased Pell Grants, maybe tuition on a sliding scale for those with low incomes. Um, there's already a national call to action going to stop paying your student loans. It's called Occupy Student Debt, and basically it's a program of debt refusal that people are just no longer going to pay their outrageous sums of student debt. Um, it's really important for students to become involved in the Occupy movement. Yeah. In Boston we have a working group called Students Occupy Boston yeah. and it's a little bit different because there's 200 colleges within 30 miles but ASU is a huge resource and those students need to be down here organizing with us. Um, academic freedom is a, increasingly under attack in higher education due to funding. Um, it's I, academic freedom. At my university I've seen it where private donors give gifts for certain <coughs> projects but then they put conditions on that. Conditions to what can be taught in their classes in their buildings and limiting people's free speech. Um, we talked about the 1% tax in Arizona that ends in 2013 that currently goes to supporting public education. We need to organize to keep that tax so we don't lose the funding. And we also talked about solidarity with the DREAM Act that I think another group is going to talk about. The, the open session and the arts ed sessions combined, um, because, and we ended up having a really interesting conversation on both of those topics. Um, the arts uh, stuff I'll go over really quickly first. Um, we talked about the... Um, tangible, provable benefits to um, cognition and um, creativity and um, even performance in, uh, in the quote-unquote core subjects like reading and math. The amazing advantages uh, for students who are immersed in arts programs that have integrated arts in their curriculum. And this is something that spans economic classes. So even in schools where um, that have been sort of under-resourced and underfunded for a while, integrating the arts into the curriculum um, help provide a really important benefit for students. And that's something that every student deserves, not just the folks who have enough money that they can pay for after school, uh, you know, music lessons. Every student should have an opportunity to immerse themselves in the arts. Um, it's important because um, it helps develop pattern seeing skills, it helps develop critical thinking, it helps develop leadership and collaboration. And these are the things that we, and, and a capacity for abstract thought. And, and an ability to see gray area and not just the black and white of life, which are the things that we need in the real world. We all know this. Life is not a multiple choice test. Um, we have all learned that filling in the bubble does not um, guarantee success <laughs> and happiness. So um, the arts are, are really important for all of those reasons. So then we moved on to some other really awesome topics that people brought to the table. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Nina to talk a little bit about that. We're all about innovation at Eastside ASU. That's their big driver. But what drives innovation is creativity. When you're taking away creativity from the schools, you're not getting innovative. Innovation's not gonna happen unless there's creativity. All right, our other topic was on the attack on ethnic studies. Um, one thing, it's it was recently in the news, uh, there's been an official ruling uh, that uh, the Mexican American Studies program in Tucson violated Arizona state law because it promoted racial resentment towards whites. Uh, this has been going on for a while, ever since Tom Horn was in, in uh, power. Uh, Tom Horn was the first to attack ethnic studies and uh, it's been going on ever since. And right now, Hoopenthal thinks he has won the case and has sealed the deal, but I believe that uh, we need to go down to Tucson and prove to him that this isn't over. We are going to appeal this. He thinks he's won, but let's tell him, let's show him that we're not. Let's do here, where he is. Yeah, let's do it. We need to, 
Hub and Thaw's here, let's do it here. We need, but we need to do something about it. Another topic we talked about, kind of sort of, I guess, going along with the ethnic studies, is that we need to uh, fight SB 1070 um, and other laws, immigration laws, that target uh, immigrant families and uh, the immigrant students in our classrooms. Um, and that kind of goes along with, uh, we're going to go ahead and talk, we didn't have time to group with uh, higher, the higher ed group, but we're going to touch upon the DREAM Act, which would um, help these gifted and talented students in our schools right now who have recently graduated high school and have dreams of going on to a higher education, and uh, but they're not given the chance because the DREAM Act is not happening for them. And uh, two groups that uh, you might be interested in are uh, Arizona Teachers for Justice, and also uh, my organization at ASU, if there's any students out there, or just actually we would like to be known as a movement uh, on and off campus. We are uh, Students for Education Reform, um, better known as uh, Sun Devils for Education Reform, because we're affiliated with ASU. So.